pressure and energy density of any ideal non-relativistic gas. Redrive the result of the preceding problem so as to appreciate its full generality and recognize the origin of the factor 2 over 3. Consider thus an ideal gas of capital N monatomic particles enclosed in a box of edge lengths Lx, Ly, Lz. If the particle is non-relativistic, its energy is related to its momentum uh, by this relationship h bar k squared over 2m, where the possible values of kx, ky, and kz are given by, if you remember, ki values are ni pi over li, where i can be x, y, or z, and uh, these ni values are starting from 1 and they are integers. Uh, use this expression to calculate the force F sub R exerted by a particle on the right wall of the container. By simply averaging, derive an expression for the mean force in terms of the mean energy of a particle. Use the symmetry requirement that kx square, ky square, kz square average values are the same when the gas is in equilibrium. Hence, show that the mean pressure exerted by the gas is equal to P bar is equal to 2 thirds U bar. U bar is the mean energy per unit volume of the gas. Okay, so uh, we have capital N monatomic particles. And the energy per particle is epsilon, so that corresponds to um, quantum states uh, given by h bar k, which is momentum squared, divided by 2m. So this is again non-relativistic particle and uh, that is equal to h bar squared divided by 2 mass of the particle and x squared divided by as there is a pi squared here lx squared ny squared ly squared and z squared lz squared so we can say that ki is equal to ni pi divided by l sub i where i is x, y or z and ni values are 1, 2, 3, etc. So let's just note these uh, facts that we know from the lecture. Now, uh, if you want to change the energy of the particle, there are two ways. You can uh, absorb heat or you can uh, do work on the particle. So, if the force uh, exerted by the particle uh, causes an incremental uh, displacement that is dLx on the right wall, so basically I have the container here and this is the the x-axis and uh, this is 0 this is Lx and the particle is exerting a force F uh, to the right and it causes a displacement of dLx on the right wall. So that's the scenario here. Okay, and this is filled with monatomic gas. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> the change in energy of the particle, delta epsilon, will be equal to uh, the work done on the gas, because there is no heat exchange, and the work done on the gas, on the particle, work done on the particle 
Again, this is first law of thermodynamics. D bar Q is zero. We don't have heat exchange. It's just the work done that is changing the energy. And this is going to be, or we can write this in differential form, D epsilon. Uh, this is going to be equal to uh, minus the dot product of the force the particle applies on the wall multiplied with the displacement it causes uh, dot product which is equal to minus f dlx in i hat direction so uh, minus f dot dlx is the work done on the particle f dot dlx is work done by the particle okay so uh, you can see that the force f is uh, minus the derivative, the partial derivative of the energy del epsilon with respect to the displacement del lx. Uh, and because I have uh, kx, ky, and kz here, so epsilon is a function of kx, ky, and kz, and only kx is a function of lx. So basically, I can see that this force is equal to minus d del epsilon del kx. And then I have del kx del lx. So this would be the derivative of epsilon with respect to lx because the lx dependence is through kx. Okay, so... Uh, if I look at my energy here, h bar square pi square, uh, h bar square kx squared over uh, 2m, is that's the part that contains uh, the kx dependence here. So uh, if I take the derivative, I would get minus uh, 2h bar square, 2h bar square kx. Uh, divided by 2m, so that's the derivative of kx with respect to lx, and that, uh, the, the epsilon with respect to kx, and then I need del kx del lx, so what is kx? kx is nx pi over lx, so the derivative is uh, nx pi minus 1 over lx square so that would be the derivative of kx with respect to lx so the uh, the twos cancel here and i'm going to obtain minus uh, h bar squared kx over uh, the minus sign will disappear because i have two minus signs so this is going to become plus plus so h bar squared kx divided by m uh, lx multiplied by nx pi over lx. So once again, nx pi over uh, lx is uh, kx. So it's going to be h bar square kx squared over uh, m. Or I can write this as... Uh, mlx or I can write this as uh, h bar squared nx uh, squared pi squared divided by m lx cube so uh, it's possible to write it in two different ways so it's either this or if you substitute for kx nx pi over lx you can write it this way now part b of the problem. Uh, I'm going to calculate the total mean force exerted by uh, the gas. Uh, first I will consider the mean force exerted by uh, the particle epsilon bar. So uh, how do I uh, calculate epsilon bar? So since epsilon is given by h bar squared over 2m, um, kx squared plus ky squared plus kz squared, if I take the average value of this, 
This will be equal to h bar squared over 2m, average value of kx squared plus average value of ky squared plus average value of kz squared. And the symmetry argument gives me this result uh, that the kx squared, ky squared and kz squared average values are the same. So instead of this, I can write 3 over 2m h bar squared kx squared average value. So because this is equal to kx squared average value, this is equal to kx squared average value. So I get three terms. So this would be 3 over 2m h bar squared uh, kx squared average value. Uh, <clears throat> so if I look at the, uh, the force that I have uh, per particle, the force per particle I have found to be h bar squared kx squared over mlx in part a. So if I take its average value, then I would have h bar squared over mlx times average value of kx squared. And average value of kx squared, according to my calculation here, is equal to 2m over 3h bar squared uh, mean uh, energy of the particle. So if I substitute that result here, it's h bar squared over mlx uh, multiplied by 2m over 3h bar squared epsilon bar, you can see that the m's will uh, cancel and you can see that the h bar squares will cancel. So I will obtain for the mean force two thirds um, <clears throat> epsilon bar over Lx and for F total uh, I would obtain two thirds, I have to multiply it by number of particles, capital N epsilon bar divided by Lx. So this would be the mean force exerted per particle, two thirds epsilon bar over Lx. Um, so that is uh, basically what you are supposed to show, derive an expression in terms of mean energy of the particle. Okay, and we have also the result here for the total average force uh, the gas is exerting, two-thirds n over L epsilon bar Lx. And in part C, uh, we, we want to look at the pressure exerted by the gas. Well, the pressure exerted by the gas, mean pressure, is the mean total force exerted by the gas divided by the area Ly Lz. So because this is in, in the x-axis here, the area uh, will be determined by uh, the other two dimensions. So if x is going to the right, then I have a y axis is here. Uh, and then I have a z axis uh, coming out like this. So you can see that the area will be determined by uh, the y and uh, z components. So this is basically the area equals to ly lz. So uh, the mean pressure that is exerted will be then two thirds and epsilon bar uh, divided by lx Ly Lz, which is two thirds capital N divided by the volume epsilon bar, which is two thirds um, capital N epsilon bar is the total uh, mean energy of the system divided by V, which is two thirds U bar. So U bar is equal to capital N epsilon bar. Um, <clears throat> so you can see that I obtain this result, two-thirds U-bar as the mean pressure exerted by this gas, once again uh, considering this time the uh, exact quantum quantized energy levels. So you can see 
uh, that this uh, U bar, the, the total energy, total mean energy of the gas, uh, it can be written this way. This is for, uh, we have to note, it's for a monatomic gas. You know that from elementary kinetic theory, this uh, energy term should be a kinetic energy. So th the total mean energy is the total mean kinetic energy for a monatomic gas. Therefore, this result applies here. Okay, so we have re-derived the result of the previous problem, uh, which was uh, two-thirds U bar. So that was using the ideal gas law and uh, the equipartition of energy. Uh, we can simply obtain this result and we can see it also from quantum mechanical point of view for non-relativistic capital and atomic particles energy per particle is momentum squared uh, energy is p squared divided by 2m momentum is equal to h bar k so <clears throat> and the k values were quantized as n pi over l so uh, we look at the work done by a force, uh, by the force exerted per particle on the right side of the uh, right wall of the container, uh, which causes a displacement dLx. And we immediately see that the force that this particle is exerting is minus the derivative of its energy with respect to displacements on, on the x-axis, uh, del Lx. And that gives us h bar square kx square over m lx as the force. If we take the average of the energy of energy per particle uh, using the symmetry that kx square ky square kz square average values should be the same, we obtain uh, two thirds epsilon bar over lx for four, uh, force per particle. Total force we have to multiply it by the number of particles. And to get the pressure, we have to divide it by the cross-sectional area of the right wall, which is Ly, Lz. So we obtain the same result, two-thirds U bar, where U bar is the uh, total mean energy of the gas, uh, which in the case of monatomic gas is actually the kinetic energy and capital N epsilon bar. But we remember from elementary kinetic theory that this force, that this uh, energy is actually uh, epsilon k bar so uh, remember from elementary kinetic theory gave us for the mean pressure two-thirds number of particles per volume mean kinetic energy uh, per particle so this was our uh, result so we can see that the same result is obtained uh, for the monatomic gas